Ladies and gentlemen, our grand entrance. Super reggae music, man. So yeah, welcome back to the art of life. Water, in particular, sort of the reason it's kind of come to my consciousness recently in mind is because of what's going on in the Sutu. That's sort of our drinking fountain, you know. We well, I mean, in essence, because the Sutu provides water yeah. to the Gauteng region. Yeah. So well, yeah, yeah. We, could, we could literally turn it off. And the Sutuans are starting to realize their power. I started to do a little bit of research around what's actually been happening in water, and obviously everybody in South Africa has been so focused on energy, actually, mm. like what's on. Uh, electricity but actually water is for the last few years has been a real concern apparently one in seven people on the planet already don't have clean drinking water um, which is a billion people um, and apparently like 90 percent of that is in Africa itself well look, the, the interesting thing and it is it is a fascinating area because um, for example California they have a serious problem with drought yeah and there's, there's a lot of work being done to determine how to Great drinking water, whether it's from sewage, whether it's from the oceans, yeah, yeah. and the impact on that, and in the in the same way that kind of solar panels and renewable energy is coming, the costs are coming down. Yeah. Um, the hope is that in future those costs will come come down as the need grow, yeah, grows greater. Yeah. But, um, desalination of water is actually not a solution because firstly it costs a hell of a lot of money in terms of energy as well as everything else, and aside from that, all of the waste product that they pump back into the ocean ruins the sea life and if our biggest body of water is not usable for us what do we actually do is these phenomenal sort of um solutions that just lay people are kind of coming up with one of the most the most uh, uh, interesting places and the most prevalent places that they're starting to tap into and our moisture uh, yeah. sort of moisture in the atmosphere and that's sort of where people are focusing the energy this guy he, he, he's in california actually and because of the whole California situation, he came up with a solution, he's a team. He's like 17 years old and he's entered a competition. He's won a few awards for this. He's created a solar powered fan mm -hmm. that sort of sits on top of a, um, a pipe that goes into the ground. And it blows the air into the ground. And as that goes into the ground, it cools down and that condensation creates water. Mm -hmm. And that then feeds the, the earth that, it's, that it surrounds. So the one that we've known about for a long time is the life straw. The life straw is like a big pipe of a straw. Mm -hmm. And um, it's made, pretty cheap and from recyclable material. You stick the straw straight into the drinking water and as you suck up the water, it purifies it through the, uh. through the actual mechanism within the straws. I mean, you give one person that straw, they've got a drinking solution for life, yeah. wherever they are. The other amazing one that I saw, actually this is one that I saw many years ago, the, the drinkable book. Okay. And essentially it's a book. Each page has got sort of information to teach the people about clean drinking water. So like for example, don't put um, um, sewage into the water, don't waste water, you know, like little messages along the way and also like skills to learn about water in uneducated places where people don't know these things. Well then it makes the assumption that people can read. Well, not necessarily, like the book does have sort of uh, illustrations and that sort of thing, it is done in a way and obviously also the water is life, isn't just like, yo, here's a book, sweet, we'll see you later. Yeah. It's like they're, they're an organization who sort of work within communities to make things better. Um, but each page of the book is actually a, a, a water filter that can be used to filter uh. clean water. This company in, I think it was in South America somewhere, where they have enormous amounts of moisture in the air, they have humidity of 98%, mm. but they have absolutely no rainfall at all. What this company did was they built an enormous billboard that essentially, um, again, sucks the, the moisture out of the air and filters it down into taps and people can just literally walk up and just Still. turn on the tap and drink. Now, oh, dude, yes, it's expensive, but you can get a solar panel put on your roof. The Tesla battery's coming and that's going to blow everything out of it. Yes, it, it is ridiculously expensive and even when it arrives for the first five, six, seven, eight years it's going to be still mad expensive but the fact of the matter is we can do that and I agree like exactly what you're saying is eventually in 10, 15, 20 years that technology will be so affordable Every that, in the only way that those companies will be able to scale will be to make it affordable so they can sell more batteries yeah. and not just sell one or two batteries to rich people. Um, well, I don't know if, you, if, you've, if you've read the work of Peter Diamandis um, he wrote this book called Abundance, and he's the guy who created the thing called the Singularity University. So the SpaceX prizes, he's the person who put this thing together. Yeah. And in his book, he talks about how, you know, they they say that in 20 years from now the fight will be over water as opposed to energy. Yeah. But what he says is that we're not taking into consideration things like 
Moore's law, yeah. which you know, which which says that technological innovation um, improves exponentially yeah. and the cost drops. Yeah. Um, so what he's saying, we have enough water on the planet yeah. to be able to supply anything you can think about. Yeah. The key is just how we're able to harness yeah. it and how we're able yeah. to purify it. Yeah. And while we may not have the solutions right now, well, the solutions may be expensive right now. Yeah. But if you look at if you look at how technology has evolved just over the last ten years, yeah. what he what he basically argues is that in the next five to ten years, we'll definitely have solutions yeah. that can solve a lot of these problems. Yeah. That we'll we have get